days. In fact, just this morning, I read, it, it, it's hitting on me that the Christian church is not really a church. It's not, we say that we are the body of Christ. But we act as if we're not. Because we are not really concerned of what's really happening to the other parts of the body. You might not know it. You might not realize it. But if a fellow brother is hurt, it's affecting you. Even if it seems that it's not affecting you. Please go to 1 Corinthians chapter 12. First Corinthians chapter 12 verse 12 says For just as the body is one and has many members and all the members of the body though many are one body so it is with Christ verse 13 for is one spirit we are all baptized into one body Jews or Greeks, slaves or free and all are made to drink of one spirit for the body does not consist of one member but of many if the foot should say because I am not a hand I do not belong to the body that would not make it any less part of the body you, you get that point? Even if you act, even if you're indifferent to the, to, the, to the concerns of to the welfare of the body, it does not negate the truth that you are still part of the body. Verse 16, And if the ear should say, Because I am not an eye, I do not belong to the body, that would not make it any less a part of the body. If the body, the whole body were an eye, where would where would be the sense of hearing? If the whole body is an ear, where would be the sense of smell? But, uh, but as it is, God arranged the members in the body, each one of them as he chose. Verse 19. If all were a single member, where would, be the, where would the body be? As it is, there are many parts. Many. Yet, one body the eye cannot say to the hand i have no need of you nor again the head to the feet i have no need of you if one member suffers all suffer together if one member is honored all rejoice together now you are the body of christ and individually members That is a truth. That is a truth that the church of Philippi realizes. That when they shared in the giving with Paul, they were giving it unto themselves. You know, there's two points here. Eh? First, as I was saying, God requires you to give something that you do not own. And I say, that should not dif be difficult. Why? It's not yours. If God told you to give, if God told you to give your, your, the gift of your classmate to her, would that be difficult to give? No, right? It's hers. But if God told you to give your necklace to her, that might be more difficult, right? Because it's yours. But what God is telling us to give is to give something which is not ours. The resources that we have. Yet the problem is we have a hard time giving it. And in return, we are hurting the body. Not realizing that when we give away the things which, is our, which are not ours, we are helping ourselves. 
That's why go to Galatians chapter 3. Galatians chapter 3, verse 28 says, Therefore, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free man. There is neither male nor female, for you are all one in Christ. Because we are one body, there is neither this nor that and if you are part of one body therefore you should care for the body now i realize something like in this case when the church in philippi gave and supported the work of paul while he was in prison or while he was still ministering something happened and and this truth is something that we have to realize verse 17 <coughs> of philippians chapter 4 so i read uh 15 to 17 now for you yourself know philippians that at at the first preaching of the gospel after i left macedonia no church shared with me in the matter of giving and receiving but you alone. For even in Thessalonica, you sent a gift more than once for my needs. Verse 17. Not that I seek the gift itself. Again, Paul here is defensive. Not that I seek the gift itself. Because at that time, there were a lot of charlatans uh, philosophers they dress up uh, like philosophers like uh, really learned men and they would they would um, sit in corners and they would have some followers but really all their intent was to get and get and get money that's very common that's why was Paul was very uh, allergic to that thought um, they collected they go from house to house. And sometimes if kulang on collection, you know they do? They will try to work. They'll try to get your sheep. They'll try to shear it. Or they'll try to go to your garden and clean it. In order to what? To get donations. And the people at that time, I found out, if you don't give to them and they serve you, you will get abusive language from them. Hinaharas! These charlatan philosophers, charlatan preachers and teachers and uh, rabbis, these fake ones, were harassing their followers to give and give and give. That's why Paul is saying, I, I say this, not that I seek the gift itself he was this he was the de defensive because he doesn't want them to think that he was he was doing this and he was dependent on them for financial support that's why when when he was raising up money for the church in Jerusalem Paul said you know I will not take it there I will you know, assign people who will take it there and I'll just accompany them. Because I don't want it to be said that I was siphoning you guys. What happens when you give to the work of God something happens in verse 17 not that i seek the gift itself but i seek for the profit which increased to your account when you know there 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 is a saying which is so true yet i think it's kind of false 
you know what it is? You cannot take your wealth to heaven. Diba? There is this famous person daw eh. Uh, I don't know who I don't. He said, make sure that when my when I'm dead, I want there's two holes in my coffin, my hands outstretched in the side. With my hands open. So that people will know that all my wealth here on earth cannot be brought to heaven. True? True, right? True yet false. I realize you can take your wealth to heaven. But you have to send it in advance. I realize that. You cannot send it after you die. It only can be sent when you're still alive. Right? Go to Matthew chapter 6, please. And this is a famous verse. Matthew chapter 6, <coughs> verse 19. Uh, 6, verse 19, yes. Do not store up for yourself treasures on earth. Where moth and rust destroy, and where thieves break in and steal. But instead, store up for yourself treasures in heaven, where neither moth nor rust destroy, or where thieves do not break in or steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. Clear, diba? You can send. You can send money ahead of time. Even here it says, but I seek, in verse 17 of Philippians 4, but I seek for the profit which increased to your account. Your giving to the word of God increases your treasures in heaven. So when we give, we're storing up already treasures in heaven. In fact, God, Paul, made an instruction specifically for that. You know, you know, I realized when I was making this message, I find this message very uncomfortable because I never, never preached in my life, I think, on such a message. Eh, ang problema, it's our verse. So I cannot not preach it. Right? I'm talking about money. I don't, but uh, it's in our verse, so I can't, I, unless I skip the passage, right? Um, go to um, 1 Timothy chapter 6. And in, in, in God instructs us here. It's so fun, it's so clear. 1 Timothy chapter 6. Verse 17 says, As for the rich in this present age, yumayaman, charge them not to be haughty. Yumayaman, wag kayo mayabang. Nor set their hopes on the uncertainty of riches, but on God who richly provide us with everything to enjoy. So it says, instruct the rich in his present charge not to be haughty, nor set their hopes on the uncertainty of their riches, but on God. Now, to those who are rich, I have, a, I have an instruction on how to use your money. Verse 18, they are to do good, to be rich in good works, to be generous and ready to share. What is the effect of this? What is the effect of using the money properly in such a 